Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Today, I am bringing a word that the Lord has been pressing on me for the last few days. So normally when I do these prophecies, I will endeavor as much as possible to do them in groups. So it is good to do prophecies about invasion in a group. It is good to do prophecies about um, changes in the economy in a group. And that is why I have done series as long as I've been doing this work on the master's voice. But occasionally, very occasionally, especially more now, God is going to absolutely disrupt the flow of the prophecies. So I was handling sexual immorality. I was handling false prophecy. I was handling exposure of the things that people do in the circles of the rich and the powerful, the famous, the well-known people. But there is a theme that has been coming forth for at least the last few weeks. And the Lord is saying that the high and the mighty are going to fall. The Lord is saying that there are going to be incredible scandals, scandals that are going to shock people, not because they will be scandals of allegation. These are going to be scandals with rock hard proof. And as I handle today's prophecy, this is a grave prophecy. It relates to the series that I did. I think it was just in July when God had said it is enough of the false prophets. It is enough of the false teachers. It is enough of the people who lie and mislead the church. So there's a secondary tier that God is not so, he is dismissive of those people. And it's those, it's the self-appointed people who God never called to the office. There will be a separate punishment for you if you come and touch the prophetic and you are not a prophet. Separate punishment for you if you go out and teach people and you are not called to teach people. Separate punishment if you are claiming that you are apostle, bishop, highest level, whatever, and you are not those things. There's just a completely separate punishment for you, and that is because you have disdained God's holy ordinances that the Bible says that Jesus Christ himself gave gifts to the church. You're not a gift, so you're in the midst of the body, and you're not a gift. You are a nightmare, an anti-gift, operating in a false flow, a false spirit. You're filling people with error. You're filling people with lies. You're filling people with false prophecy that is coming out of the polluted, stagnant pond of your belly, false dreams, lies, picking up things from the news and then saying it's prophecy, God is going to deal with those people separately. But I said in several prophecies, such as the one that said no more false prophecy, I said that it is a very heavy thing when the father himself comes and puts his hand on the people that he did call. There are a contingent of people in this earth and they are being moved. They are being moved out of the way for a new contingent of people that God also has called. But before God takes these old people, before he takes these, some of them generals in the faith, some of these people have left behind a legacy that you really can't fight with. But because they have compromised, because they have handed themselves over to the devil to just be used as tools of destruction now against God's bloated, misled, and highly deceived sheep, most of the church is operating in a deep level of deception that I really don't have time to go into right now. Because these people have come, God says you have come and you have increased the wound of my people. What does this mean? The people already wounded themselves because they hate to hear the truth. The Bible says that in the last days, they will not abide sound teaching. They will heap up teachers for themselves. What does it mean to heap up teachers? It means that if Jesus were to come and inspect your YouTube playlist of the pastors you are listening to, you have piled up about 35 to 800 false prophets, false pastors, people whose words perfectly reflect the lie that you exist in. That's what it means to heap up. It means that you have created a careful playlist of every lie currently on the lie playlist on earth and you're listening to those lies while you drive and you're thinking bless god i feel so energized and you are being energized lifted up like a kite upon false winds you're preparing your field and you think it's going to rain on the field but then you're listening to dry clouds that have no rain and you're going to sit there until you finally realize oh no i have to understand that reality is not matching up with what these people said
So when God comes to judge these people for adding deeper pain to the wound that those who love lies and those who are gullible have already received, it is going to be a very heavy punishment and I made it clear that the punishment that God has for many of these people is death. As far back as October 2021, I was saying that I was seeing ministers pass away in the pulpit from heart attacks and strokes. So God will not even allow some of these people the dignity of dying quietly at home. You're going to die in front of the whole church. And only the wise in the church who have discernment will understand that this is the kind of Ananias and Sapphira judgment where as you are in the middle of a new lie, as you are in the middle of another sugary teaching, he will strike you right where you stand. And God has always been telling me, and I will share a little bit of testimony because it was bubbling in me. I'm not one to share anything about personal, but um, wherever it's going to serve better understanding, I, I don't mind sharing. But God was telling me that these people are going to be taken away in the midst of their sin as an example to the modern church that the modern church does not know God. The modern church really doesn't know who God is. They have been taught this flavorful, savory soup of a God who is just so accommodating, a God who is willing to bend to the church's many flaws. So in the old days, it was understood that you had to separate of your sin. You have to loose yourself from the temptations and run after God. But that gospel became boring to the modern church and, and it was just not filling up the churches and people were feeling that the yoke of all these requirements is too much like the Old Testament and too much like the law and let's get some pithy teaching in here that gets the people going, woo, woohoo. And so the gospel eventually became this corrupt and perverted pretzel where now you do nothing to change. You do nothing to purify. You do nothing to get better. You just stay the way you are and God's gonna wrap himself around you in a cloud of acceptance, a cloud of love, and you just live your truth. The new gospel is live your truth. If you're gay, live your truth. If you're trans, live your truth. Living your truth means that if you find one of those horrible churches that won't accept you, you can just take your feather boa and just flounce down the street until you find a trans acceptance church, an LDGBTJYK church. And then you just jump in there and live your truth because in that church, they have grasped the bull of the gospel by the horns. And they will accept you because God said, love at all costs, love them, love their sin, love it all. So the brief testimony that I will show for us to understand that God is not interested in what you think, what you believe and what you know is that I came up in great churches. I will always salute those men of God. They did not teach me lies. They did not fill me with doctrinal error of the sort that is flying around now. They did not accept in discipline. When I was in church, it was understood that the pastor has the right to discipline the flock because the flock is the flock and the pastor is the pastor. You could not just send emails to the pastor and tell him, well, I was reading the Apocrypha and it's amazing that you just don't bring up Enoch and the fallen angels and I just don't feel comfortable here. You, you couldn't even think of doing such things. You went to church to hear the word of God and if you were blessed enough to be put in good churches like I was in my youth, you got the truth and the whole truth. There are men of God who preached the revelation according to all that they had and the truth of the matter is, is that there just wasn't fallen angel doctrine and many of the things that God had to bring me into himself. And so the Lord orchestrated an opportunity in my life that I did not understand at the time what that opportunity was. And God took me away from busyness, serving in church, uh, being the Christian auntie that was always giving counseling and everything. He separated me unto himself because God will always call people that he is going to use as blades in the end times. Before a blade can be any use, it's just a hunk of metal. It's just a piece of steel. It has potential, but it's not useful. It's just a blunt instrument. 
And so at that time, pastors were instructing my life, but God was instructing me also. And there came a time where God grew dissatisfied between the disconnect and he pulled me away unto himself for a period of nearly three to four years. And it was in that time where the Lord gave me my commission in 2012 and began to reveal to me such mind blowing things that to be honest, the foundation that I had, which was already strong, it had to fall apart under the weight of learning that on TV, when you're watching the X-Men, the X-Men are actually nothing more than the mighty men, the men of renown from Genesis 6. God loaded so many things onto my old foundation that it broke. And I began to know God after I had recovered from the shock because he is merciful. And if you are humble, God will nurse you through all the fear. He will nurse you through all the shock. I had to come into the knowledge of a stronger and much more robust foundation. And one of the things I learned about God that is not being taught in any churches is that God is not afraid to kill you. God does not stay up at night wondering if he should take an unfaithful person from the land. If you read the Old Testament, you will know that you could be put in the ground and ancient Israel would continue in the everyday life of milking the goats and grinding corn. And even if they were missing you under your grave of stones where they had stoned you yesterday, not a single person was going to bring up your name in the camp because they didn't want to join you out there at the periphery. So the original people in the scripture understood that there are things, there are transgressions for which there's no forgiveness. There's no acceptance. God is merciful and God will bear long with you season after season. But as I said about the bull heifer, when he keeps calling bull heifer pastors, bull heifer prophets, I am not speaking about the fakery of the fakers. I'm speaking of the true gifts who may even now be compromising. And by the grace of God, this video may land on your feed. When he keeps calling you and you won't come back into the barn, he's going to shut the barn doors. And because you're not a flea, you will not be able to get in. Today's prophecy was received very early in the morning, cloudy morning, a fitting morning for these words. September 13, 2022, and the title of this prophecy, the entire focus of this prophecy is the man known as Bishop T.D. Jakes. The title is T.D. Jakes and the Fivefold Ministry. And I'm, this prophecy is just... It's not even published yet, and so I'm just going to read from what I have. Oh, before I start, I will go chronologically. So in 2014, let me just go here. The, the title of this prophecy, this is a private prophecy, and I shared a little bit about it in the prophecy that is called No More False Prophecy. I'm just going to read a few things here, not everything. This prophecy I received when I was in that period where God had isolated me unto himself. And one of the things, as I said, that I learned from God himself, because this is not often preached, is that you can lose your life for messing with the precious things of God. And so... The Lord said that he was going to shake the world. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to lift it up the way they lifted up that baby in front of King Solomon, and I'm going to rattle it until everything that is not fixed, it means anything that is not built on a sure foundation, everything that is not nailed down is going to tumble out, be destroyed, and be put in disarray. I'm going to shake this world the way a big, strong man grabs hold of a smaller man and shakes him until all the change rolls out of his pocket, until his teeth are shaking in his mouth. Part of what the Lord said is that in 10 years' time, he had his eye on particular ministers. He said that he was going to be watching them. He was going to be weighing them in the balance. And I spoke about this in the video about, it's called A Word to the Righteous. God said he was going to be weighing five-fold ministers in the balance. This word was given to me on January 17, 2014, and it's simply called A Word on January 17, 2014. He said he was going to be evaluating them, and within 10 years, he would have reached an estimation 
on some of the world's biggest ministers. So imagine there's just me. I'm just with God, spending more and more time in my notebooks, beginning to fill up my notebooks with things that I've never heard and, and growing a healthy fear of God and to just little me. God begins to name names. Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Eddie Long, Benny Hinn. And he said that these people would be weighed. He was going to check each one of them. And he said, not all of them will be around at the end of the 10 year period. And not all of them are going to see my face either. They're going to die one by one celestial. And you are going to hear about it. He says that some of them will be in heaven. So God says that there would be ministers who, even though they die, their final estimation would be with him in heaven. He said that these ones that are taken away, they will see my face because I took them away to keep them from perdition. I was speaking of Minister Miles Monroe, who died tragically and shockingly. And as most people will admit, it seemed way before his time. It seemed that that man would still have a race to run. But I spoke about how everybody gets a unicycle, that we're supposed to cycle with precision on the narrow road. And that man's unicycle began to jump off the track. And God took him. God said that he took him. And the prophecy is on the master's, blog, on the master's voice. It's called cornucopia, and it's from... 2019. And so the Lord said that he would take people to heaven. He said that several of them, and here is one, he said, Eddie Long will receive in his flesh the eternal punishment of the things he's done. Creflo Dollar shall not see my face unless he repents, but his wife will be received because she continues to live a separate life unto me. Now imagine God is saying a righteous and a, an unrighteous yoked in marriage, but one unrighteous has no chance unless there is genuine repentance. And God says the other one, though yoked with an unrighteous, has somehow managed to keep herself from defilement. And so he would receive her. Here's the subject of the prophecy. This we will call it tier one, charges and indictment against T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes will not enter my presence. He can go and enter the presence of the ones he is currently serving. That is all the Lord said back then in 2014. And you ask me if I had a clue who he was currently serving since the man is on every international TV station serving God. In 2014, I had no clue of what the Lord meant when he said the ones he is currently serving. So this is tier one. In January 17, 2014, God said that this man will never enter his presence. He said that this man will never see his face. And now I come to the prophecy called Cornucopia, the Hall of Delights. I received it June 20, 2019. And then at that time, God was giving me names to name. So in this prophecy, Creflo Dollar was openly named for his sins. God said he is a big fat compromiser. He is a showman and an extensive liar. God names, named Joyce Meyer and said that that woman in the spirit, she stands with a vacuum cleaner and all that vacuum cleaner does is suck money out of the congregation. I saw money flying out of big stadium crowds, going into that vacuum cleaner and going into the coffers of Joyce Meyer. And in both cases of those ministers, God said that he was watching them and he was watching if they would repent or not. This is June, 2019. There was a man I saw and the Lord told me, don't name this man. Do not put this man in public and do not bring shame to this man. Here is what I wrote. There is a man I am told to mention, but not his name. The Lord said that this man was a special cup in his hand, a man that God gave a double portion, a man who was far more eloquent and talented than most of his ministry compatriots. And you cannot lie that when that man hits the pulpit and begins to go into the word, this is not a person who is unskilled in explaining what the word of God says. God becomes very angry when you actually get a double portion and you turn it into spiritual wasting. 
I saw written over the head of this man the word charis. Charis is the Greek word for grace, which also means divine favor, special ability. That's our root word for the word charisma. Charis can be seen as the special sauce that God will give someone. David had this. Solomon had even more of this. The special sauce that God will give someone that makes them exceptionally good at something. And in the case of this man, that is all I said, though I could see who I was talking about. He was called to preach the gospel. The Lord said that this man was a special cup in his hand, full of the Lord's good graces and virtues. And this is why I do not reply when people come and say, he was always false. You just haven't been living enough, long enough to have seen and inspected that man's older work before he became flawed, faulty, and a Freemason. The Lord said that he was full of the good graces of the Lord, but now he has profaned himself. This just means to wipe yourself with the filth of the dark kingdom while continuing to stand before the people as if you are clean and full of light and God is not happy with him. The Lord, however, is full of tender mercy towards him. And that is why I cannot name him for God has a soft spot for him, but I see a cup filling against him. This cup was once gold, but it has now become tarnished, which is always a sign that there is reprobate activity going on. A precious metal turning dull means that you have lost it somewhere and that you have to repent and come back to Jesus in order for him to polish off those dull and evil spots of tarnishing. This cup is filling steadily with a dark red liquid that is God's judgment against this man. Because this man was given a double portion, he was doubly gifted. I see that his cup is twice as big as other ministers. And this is why other ministers, Bishop Eddie Long, other ministers, um, Pastor Frederick Price, other ministers, minister or Pastor Miles Monroe, they didn't have the same size of cup as T.D. Jakes. And so they were taken out early according to the judgment of God. And yet this man continues on. Bishop T.D. Jakes continues on. He's still standing. I see his cup is twice as big as other ministers. And I know that when this cup finally overflows, this man is going to hit trouble because God will make him drink that cup that he has filled by the profane things that he is doing. Let the reader read and understand for this image can be used for every one of us who continues stubbornly in our sin. And so the prophecy came on January the 5th, 2021. I held this prophecy back because it was full of people dying. The prophecy, I finally published it on July 11th, 2022, yet I had received it as far back as January 5. And one of the people that God said was going to die is the man TB Joshua. And he did die and the prophecy was still unpublished. God said that teachers should know they will receive a stricter judgment. And in this prophecy, because the Lord was putting so much pressure on me, let me tell you believers that now one of the strongest thing that God says to me is do not hold back my words. It's not exactly a threat, but it's kind of like what God told Jeremiah right at the beginning when he called him. He said that you will go to whoever I tell you to go to. And when you go there, you're going to speak all my words, not some of them. You will go to whom I send you and you will say what I give you to say. And what he told Jeremiah is if you get out there and let the public pressure and the people going, why don't you prophesy about this? Why don't you prophesy anything good? How come you say you're a prophet and God hasn't given you this vision yet and this revelation yet? God told Jeremiah in, in private, you get out there and you let the mouths of those people control you like a radio dial and tell you to say what they want you to say. God told him, I will confound you in front of them. I will dismay you. Do you know what dismay is? It is a kind of utter hopelessness when the thing you are hoping for fails. 
It's like applying for housing and getting told that you have to wait until 30, 34 to get considered or put on the waiting list. It is a sinking feeling when God tells you that. And I made up my mind from the beginning that nothing would come out of my mouth hooked out by what people want to hear. And so God was speaking of the fall of pastors. And in this old prophecy, January 5, 2021, a long time ago, a year ago, where God had named names of who will die, the same names from 2020, 2014 came back. Joyce Meyer, Dave Meyer, Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, T.D. Jakes, Eddie Long, Benny Hinn. These were the same names that God had spoken and broken them up into righteous departure, unrighteous departure. He said that for bringing the unrighteous, corrupt, wicked doctrine, false doctrine, and corrupting, misleading, and fooling the church, he was going to judge them. But that's not all he said. God was speaking and saying that T.D. Jakes, that was the first time I understood the 2014 prophecy, is a Freemason that this man has taken occultic vows and that he is part of a brotherhood, that he is serving Satan, who is his true Lord and master, and therefore he is using his gifts and abilities to cloud the mind of people. Do you know what it is when you are in a ministry and someone is working in the dark arts? Someone has taken an oath to Satan. You're sitting there thinking your pastor has taken an oath to God and as God, like God revealed in the African, as the problem in the African churches, you're sitting there and a man has taken an oath to an entity with breast and a tail sitting under the sea on a throne with a crown on her head, the queen of her coast and her little minor deities. Your pastor serves that thing and then stands before you, preaches a word of seduction to you has taken the souls of the member in, members in covenant and can hand them over at any time to pay his dues under the sea. I don't know much about Freemasonry. I just know that it's a thing that serves the devil, especially at the highest level. And they're a tight brotherhood that is giving out no secrets. So that is... Cornucopia is the second indictment, 2019. The third indictment, no more false prophecy. M ministers who are going to depart the life because God said the 10-year period has come to an end and the people he was naming, T.B. Joshua, Frederick Price, even the lady who was still alive, Pastor Marilyn Hickey, he said that it's game up for them, that their corruption is so deep and he's going to take them away the third indictment. Here we are, the fourth indictment, title of the prophecy, T.D. Jakes and the Fivefold Ministry. When I woke up today, I heard the Lord said that you will make that video today, the one about T.D. Jakes. That man is going to die in scandal and I will have no further mercy on him. He is going to die fighting scandals. And God has been saying this for a period of days. I have been hearing it. You have not made the video. Make the video. And so I am making this video today before the sun sets. Because one of the rules of carrying God's prophetic words is that if you keep them too long, they will burn you. They will burn you. You will get no peace until you let them out. Because until a proclamation is made, God cannot judge a person. You're holding on to a judgment word for somebody God has told you and told you about that girl who is your friend to give her a warning and you're standing there. I think she'll get offended. You know, Lord, I'm waiting for the right time. And then a bus hits her. Ezekiel 33. When I give you a word to warn the unrighteous in his sin and you do not sound the warning, and the unrighteous is taken away in his sin. He is taken away, but his blood I will require of you. And so I took the time. I am taking this moment to bring this word out because this word is sitting on my head like a boiling pot, and it must come out. He will die in legal battles, and he will be fighting for the last shreds of his reputation. God says he's going to shame this man. He's just been saying these things, and I've been thinking, Lord, I will make the video. I will expose the details of his sexual infidelity to his wife, his children, and the whole world. He has been grossly unfaithful to me. Gross unfaithfulness of the kind I can no longer forgive. 
I take my hand off him and I reject him just like Saul. He will go down in a wave of scandals and impropriety that will rock his church to the foundations. He is a pedophile and he is gay. He is homosexual and he is not interested in women. I will expose the scandals with boys and youths and I will bring out all the details so that people can know who their beloved bishop really is. Celestial, there is a difference between a boy and a youth. A boy is too small to understand or even give sexual consent. You should never touch a boy sexually. It is not his time. A boy is to be pure and set apart for his day of covenant to his wife. Parents, there's gold for you here. There's gold for you allowing your eight and 12 year olds, he's such a mature boy for his age, to watch the same programs that you are watching and I'm not even going to question why you are watching those programs and claiming that you are Christian. When you touch a boy, you anger me because I hold children special. I see them as protected zones. Parents are supposed to watch over the young and even animals in the field know this. A youth is different. A youth is one who is older and he is aware of his sexuality, but youths should also be protected. Youths should also stay pure. Young men, there is gold for you here. You think that you are practicing safety when you wrap it up. God has a brand new standard for you. His standard is zip it up because he does not want to have to come and thrash you with judgment for being sexually immoral and impure in your generation. God says that coercing young people, in this case, young men, which is what this man does, he says coercing them and enticing them by giving them access to come close to the fame, the money, or giving them the false promises that you'll be a father figure to them or giving them gifts to make it easier to groom them. These are all things that Bishop Eddie Long was guilty of. These are all things that were exposed on that man. And that is why he ate the bitter pill that he had to. Public scandal until the day he left this earth. God says that Bishop Jakes has been with both boys and youths. And all of this is going to come out. He will be exposed and his entire empire will collapse. He didn't love me. He did not set his love upon me. He did not fix himself to be faithful to me. And so I have abandoned him and soon the wolves will come. One of those top wolves have got to be the press. I shared recently that on the prayer call, God said, big networks like CNN, who are known for persecuting righteous people, CNN never wants to celebrate any good. They will always go after the righteous and make them look like fools. But God said, because the time has come where he will tear down the unrighteous, CNN is going to have a field day pretending to be a network that cares about upholding good things, and God says they're going to turn their little Star Trek lasers on all the falling stars and shoot them to pieces in the press, as if that's what they usually do, as if they usually shoot at corruption instead of hiding it and making excuses for it. So he said the wolves will soon come. They will accuse him. They will tear his clothes from on him until he's naked in front of everyone. And as I was hearing this prophecy, God made that sizable man stark naked in front of me. They will see his great shame and they will be revolted by who has been teaching them, leading them and laying hands on them all along. I will stop here for a moment to point out that God says, your pastor is a fornicator out there. You probably don't know if you have no discernment. You're sitting there and you love this man like your own father, and yet he's not faithful to his wife. He's sleeping with Deacon Franks, or he's sleeping with Deaconess Franks if he's not bent that way. And then afterwards he will say, I just feel, I just feel the movement of the spirit and I just want to lay my hands on you. And God says, when a fornicator lays his hands on you, that is individually laying his hands and blessing his flock 
as shepherds do, they call their sheep and they put oil on the sheep's head and they pick out all the lice and the ticks and they take care of their sheep. So when this man who has an impure sexual life lays his hands on you, or even if he says, let's rise and share the benediction church, and he raises his hands on top of you. And God says, when this, when this man begins to impart over you, you collectively, or you just in a one-on-one -on -one session, God says that you will end up receiving spirits that make you a bigger fornicator than the fornicator himself. Be careful. The Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Do not listen to this modern generation celestial. They are like men who are already dead in their graves. These people love sin and they make allowances for it. And there is an entire video dedicated to this one sentence. God telling me, do not be like them. This is something that he tells me all the time. Separate yourself. Do not be like your generation celestial. I thank him for his leading and teaching. He said they're like dead men in their graves already. Dead how? He said they're dead because they love sin. Understand that even if you're keeping your life clean, but you see the, the, the you know, the, there's this church in America where, um, I'm not sure, so I'm not going to call it, but there's a denomination in America where they've already agreed to do LGBT and they've already opened their doors and they've already welcomed it and said it's a loving environment and they always have the pride flag outside and they wear this thing. I don't know. It's a thing that goes around their neck and it comes down like this and it's always rainbow colors just to let them know that we have opened up the altar to all the sexual immorality spirits. And when you see us wearing these colors, you just come right in and, and we'll just love on you until all of us go to the lake of fire. God says that people love sin and they constantly make allowances. And here's what they say, let's not judge. Don't judge. You don't know his struggle. And this is not me, this is the Lord it's too early to make these things up. And I never make things up here. I just write and repeat, write and deliver. Let's not condemn him. I mean, he looks sorry. Didn't Jesus say we should forgive? These are the excuses of the modern day Pharisees, the modern day sympathizers of sin. If you want to know God's heart on this topic, look for one of the recent videos with the blue background that says with sympathy, that video, if it doesn't wake you up to know that there is a standard where if God says, don't do it, there's a twofold level of standard. You don't do it and you don't support a single person who does. You don't make excuses for a single person who does. You speak to them in love and you remonstrate with them in love because life is more than these petty arguments we have. Well, why are you judging him? Well, you don't know his story. Life is what happens to the body after you are gone. You, you make these arguments on the internet and then you press send and then you just feel, oh, mic drop, mic drop. And then all of a sudden Jesus is in front of you. Your soul has been raised up from that dirt. And Jesus is like, let's talk about these mics that you were dropping. Some of you, you need to go back to your comment history. You need to go back to your Facebook. And if you can't get rid of all the things you supported, you might just need to trash that entire Facebook and start again. Because these things, if you do not repent of them, cleanse your robes, O oh sinners. You'll be sorry. So let's not condemn him. Didn't Jesus say we should forgive? They are so blind that they can't see if the leaders are corrupt, the church will perish. They can't see that if the leaders are involved in gross sexual sin, the entire sanctuary becomes defiled and the anointing will leave them. They are sympathizers of sin. They are dead in their own trespass, and that's why they approve of those who trespass. That's why they tear down the walls of my church by sleeping with men when they are men, by sleeping with women when they are women, and then they dare to climb the pulpit and put my name in their mouth 
with no remorse, with not one twinge of shame, of repentance for what they have done. The bellies of the saints will roll as their leaders continue to fall. Scandals will come out and your sex tape will be floating around on the internet until you will never want to preach again. And God said in another prophecy, this one is printed, that T.D. Jakes is basically going to lose his life at a time when legal battles, God said that this man is going to go down fighting to keep a few shreds of his reputation in place. One of the things that the Lord said in the prophecies that are already printed is that um, he will go down fighting to suppress evidence. So you know when you come to court and they have this fiery evidence against you and, and the prosecutor wants to submit that evidence and the defense team is saying, oh, no, 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 it's prejudicial. No, you can't admit it. They're saying that because they know if that evidence drops in court and a jury of peers sees that stuff, they're going to hand down a guilty verdict in like 27.4 seconds when they send them out to deliberate. God said this man is going to use considerable power, considerable money to suppress info. These kids are going to be the accusers. Who brought Bishop Eddie Long down? Was it some huge conglomerate? It was those little children and the evidence and pictures that they had on their cell phones that toppled that empire. And the same thing is going to happen to the potter's house. God said that the saints' bellies, people are basically going to become sick when they see these scandals. Sex tapes of pastors floating around on the internet until those pastors, they will not be able to lift their head or preach again. God said, shame is your portion. Uncovered skirts. I will lift up your skirt, my church, far above your head and let everyone see your nakedness. Now, do you see why I'm saying that most people don't know God? People think that God loves the church so much that he's going to cover our sin. God is going to expose this church for being a hypocrite, fornicator, uh, same-sex, trans-dressing at home, pastors, deacons, um, even the members. God is going to expose it all, and the world will see. The world will see what really goes on behind the pulpit, what really goes on behind our closed doors and our, and our Father God, we love you. He's going to show it. The thing that makes this modern church think that God loves us so much that he's going to pander to filth. <laughs> I am braiding a whip of cords for believers. I will whip the leaven out of you, watch and see. Many offended will leave. Many offended will depart, and with their exit, you will feel better. Do you know who's going to feel better? Righteous believers who are sick of this. Righteous believers who are tired of being in um, these Baptist churches and in um, these other conventions and seeing the leadership suppress sex scandal after pedophilia scandal after he touched my breast seven times and it's not just one woman it's seven women each saying he touched my breast on seven different occasions and this person is like i i don't even know what a breast is i'm a man of god god says that when all this leaven is whipped out of the sanctuary the believers who are sick of this suppression and hiding and pretense are going to heave a sigh of relief and they're going to feel much better. With their exit, you will feel better. You don't know what you need, but I know. I will braid a cord of thorns for you. I will overturn the tables of the charlatans who sell salvation, who sell sacred items like oil and blood. African church, that's a shout out to you from Jesus. You keep selling those things and see what's going to happen to you, oh seller in the house of God. I will whip them away from you and then whip you also for consorting with them. So God is saying he's going to whip away those who are leavened and then he's going to whip the remaining people forever daring to tolerate those others. So it's just whipping all around this morning, September 13, 2022. I will whip whip you believers until you know truth in your inward parts. This is Psalm 
51, the famous psalm of repentance and purging in the presence of our fiery king. Then you will depart from the paths of unrighteousness and you will seek my true path by salvation, which is a gift, and you are expected to steward that gift so that you can be received on the last day. I will clean up inside the sanctuary. My word is already coming against the ministers who have fallen from grace. Fallen from grace means that God has given you up like Saul. Remember, when God gave up Saul, Saul didn't fall immediately. So God is done with many of these people a long time ago, but they're still in front of us putting out information, putting out Facebook and, and having conferences and people are still flocking to them because people don't know these are rejected apostate leaders who are serving things under the sea, who are serving brotherhoods. My word is coming against them. It will take time for this fall to manifest, but God says it will surely manifest because he's not unrighteous and his word will not fail. Ministers who have totally forfeited their post. Fivefold ministers, prophet, apostle, pastor, evangelist, teacher. If I inspect you and if I see that you have failed your commission, you will receive a double judgment. You do not want to meet me. I will be to you like a lion who meets a man on the road, a man who suddenly sees a wild animal that he did not expect to see. I will be to you like a bear. That just means I'm going to tear you to pieces. Let's not pretend that lions meet people and say, oh, I'm so sorry, please pass by, here's the path. You meet a lion on the road, you cannot outrun that thing, you cannot outfight that thing. That thing comes with weight, hair, rage, instinct, cunning, and a lot of sharp and tearing things. You meet God in that position. Repent and cut off your diseased limbs and begin now to work the works of righteousness. Otherwise, I will come to you and I will put your lamp into darkness. I will take away your candlestick. And for some of you, that will mean eternal darkness and gnashing of teeth. Repent, make straight the way of the Lord. And that is the word concerning Bishop T.D. Jakes going all the way back from the first time God ever brought him to my attention showed me that there is more behind the curtain of this man, that this man has predilections, that this man has preferences that have nothing to do with this Bible, this teaching, that he is serving an overlord who is not the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, and that not only he will fall, but the stars are coming down, all the bright stars in the political arena. God is saying that you are full shame. The Wall Street Journal will carry your entire history dating back to the time your father planted an apple tree and you used to sit under the apple tree and dream of being a politician up to now when you fall in scandal. It will all come out. Every arena. God already dedicated two prophecies to Beyonce alone. So don't think that anyone is too high up there that the father can't touch. He will touch. And whoever he says, I will be here with my trusty tablet bringing forth the word of the Lord. I am celestial and this is the master's voice. Until I see you again, the Lord bless you and goodbye.